once again comes through for his people when the children of Israel find themselves bogged in the Red Sea, God miraculously parts the sea so that they could cross on dry ground. God is coming through for his people in a mighty way. And we also know that after some time, now Pharaoh uh, says to the Egyptians, No, these slaves, they should come back. Let us go after them. And the army of Pharaoh, as they were pursuing God's people, we know, my brothers and sisters, that God closed the Red Sea and the whole lot of the army of Pharaoh was drowned in the sea. So God is coming through for his people. He is taking them from Egypt and bringing them to the Lord land that he has promised uh, them. We know also that uh, when the children of Israel now see them, they are facing the wilderness not knowing where to go, not knowing where to head and it is at that time that God appears to them as a pillar of the cloud by day and as a pillar of the fire by uh, night to guide and to lead the children of Israel every step of the way. So we see God coming through for his children and along his way, my brothers and sisters, we see God giving them the bread of heaven. We see God giving them the food that is eaten by angels. God giving them manna. God giving them manna. God is coming through for his children. We know also, my brothers and sisters, that God gave them water to drink in the wilderness. They never failed to get any food. They never failed to get any water to drink. God still is guiding his children. And as they are journeying along the way, there come a time when they arrive at Sinai. And it is at Sinai where they stayed for almost a year at Mount Sinai. At almost a year, they were camped there uh, at Mount Sinai. It is here at Mount Sinai where we see God giving his children the Ten Commandments so as to govern uh, them as a nation. It is also here at Mount Sinai where God instructs Moses to uh, erect a tabernacle so that the children of Israel might worship him as their God. It is also here that the Levites are instructed and trained on how to operate or how to work and minister in the tabernacle. It is also here, my brothers and sisters, where the children of Israel are organized into proper tribes. When they are organized, we know when they left Egypt in a flood, they were not organized, but now as they are at Mount Sinai, they are organized uh, into tribes, and as they are organized into tribes, they are camping uh, in an orderly manner uh, around the tabernacle, uh, three tribes in the south, three tribes in the north, three tribes in the east, and three tribes in the west. It is also here at Mount uh, Sinai uh, where Moses is given an advice on how to lead the children of Israel, on how to lead some leadership advice on how to, that he should delegate we know that he was given this advice by his father-in-law, uh, Uchetro. But after uh, a year, we see God uh, coming to Moses again and saying, Moses, you have stayed for too long in this mountain. Moses, now it is time for you to go forward. Now it is time for you to continue with the journey that you have ahead of you. Going to where? Going to the land of promise, my brothers and sisters. Going to the ultimate goal to fulfill the mission. Going to fulfill the purpose that I have for you, for you to possess the land. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, See, I have given you the land. Go and possess it, the land that I saw to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Go and possess that land. You would realize, my brothers and sisters, that the task of the children of Israel was easy. It was to continue moving. It was just to go and fulfill the 
promise and fulfill the mission that God had for them. Over 30 times in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses tells Israel to go in and possess the land. He tells them to go and possess the land. And from Mount Sinai, we see them turning towards the promised land. We see them going towards Canaan. And as they are going towards Canaan, when they reach the desert of Paran, when they reach a place that is called Kadesh Banya, and Kadesh Banya, it is uh, at the border of the promised land. This is where they find themselves in, at the very border of the promised land. And at Kadesh Banya, uh, we see Moses selecting 12 men to go on a spy mission inside the promised land. But I want you to understand something. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 28, you would realize, my brothers and sisters, that the mission to spy the land, the mission to go into Canaan and spy it, it was not an idea that came from the Lord. Moses, after some time, he tells the children of Israel that then you came to me and said, let's send men before us to spy out the land. They can come back and tell us about the way we should go and the cities we will find. Moses is telling the children of Israel here that to listen to me, the uh, mission to go and spy the land did not come from me, but you are the ones who came to me and said, let's send men to go into the land and spy the land so that we know which better road to use as we go and possess the land. So this mission was not coming from the Lord. And also, when you read Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 6, the Lord says to the children of Israel, On that day I raised my hand in an oath to them to bring them out of the land of Egypt into a land that I had spied. God says to the children of Israel, I had already spied out the land for them, and it is a land flowing with milk and honey, the glory of all lands. So God here is saying, I had already spied out the land. So there was no need for you to send any more spies to spy the land because I had already spied out the land. It is uh, really a land flowing with the milk and honey, the glory of all lands. But nonetheless, my brothers and sisters, the spies were sent and they went on to the mission uh, to see the land. For 40 days, uh, the spies were in the land of Canaan. They were in that land. But after 40 days, the spies, they came back. When you read Numbers chapter 18, verse 25 to 33, that's where we see and read of the report of the spies. They come with the report. And as the children of Israel hear that the spies have come, the children of Israel, they come all together to gather to hear the good news about the land. And really, indeed, my brothers and sisters, uh, some of the spies, they begin to speak and they begin with the good news. The spies, they say, when you read Numbers chapter 18, verse 27 to 28, we went into the land you sent us, and surely it is a fertile land. Here is some of its fruit. So they are confirming that really what the Lord said about the land is very true. It is a land that is flowing with milk and honey. And here is the evidence. Here is some of its fruit. But the people, they continue to say, who live there are strong. Their cities are walled and very large. We even saw some of the Anakites there. So here now the people and the Caleb realizes that no, 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 what these guys are now saying, no, it's not it. Realizing the faith of the Israelite people was fighting fast. Caleb, one of the faithful spies, he speaks up and he says in verse number 30, then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we certainly can do it. So Caleb comes and says, no, 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 
no, no. My brothers, what you are saying, no, it's not it. We should go up at once and take possession of the land. For surely we can do it. Caleb, as you realize, was the voice of faith. His faith was not in the, in, in the strength or the might of the Israelite people, but his faith was in the wonderful promise of God. Caleb believed, my brothers and sisters, that God had promised this land to them, and victory was certain no matter how big the opponent or how great the obstacles. Yeah. Think of it, it was called the promised land because it was a land that was promised to them. But before Caleb could rally the children of Israel to go in and possess the land, verse number 32 says, the faithless spies, they continued to speak and they spread among the children of Israel a bad report. Uh, some other versions say uh, an evil report about the land they had uh, explored. As negative, pessimistic, uh, faithless people often do, the ten spies started spreading gross exaggerations. They started amplifying the problem of false information to solidify their position. My brothers and sisters, the devil is a master at making things look worse than they actually are. The world has its problems, yes. And if we focus on the negative, we will lose our peace and we will lose our victory. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the world has its problems. But let us not magnify the problems of the world. Let us not magnify the times that are ahead of us. No, because when we do that, we lose our peace and we lose our victory. They continue to speak these faithless spies. They say the land we explored divorce those living in it. Can you imagine all the frightful images conjured in the minds of the children of Israel as these people were speaking? They say the land that we explored divorce the people that are living in it. Is that true? Just now you were saying it is a land flowing with milk and honey, but now you are saying the very same land divorce the people that are uh, living in it. That was a lie. They continue to say once again in verse number 32, yeah, the people we saw there, all the people they say are giants. Was that true? Yes, there were giants in Canaan, but were all the people giants? No, that was not true. But here, these people are saying, everyone that you see, everyone is a giant there. That was not true. Still not certain that they had convinced the Israelites. The spies, they continue to say, we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. My brothers and sisters, look at what these people are saying. They are saying we looked like grasshoppers in their own sight, and even when we looked at ourselves, we saw ourselves as grasshoppers. How could they say such a thing? They started to say scary things that never happened. The ten spies were so successful in inventing Israel's moral sense that the people really wanted to go back to Egypt, which was, of course, the real land of death that had eaten the Israelites alive. Israelites, they now are contemplating on going back to Egypt. Just imagine as they are at the borders of the promised land. And I want you to understand one thing also. Just because the voice of the majority is louder does not make it right. Just because the voice of the majority is louder. Yes, the voice of the ten people was louder than the voice of Joshua and Caleb. But it doesn't mean that the ten spies were right. No, my brothers and sisters, we should not follow the majority, but we should follow the voice of the Lord. We should follow the word of God. We should live on a thus says the Lord. Because most of the time when you read in antiquity, the people who were always in the majority were always on the wrong side. So let us not follow the majority. Neither let us not just follow the minority, but let us follow the word of the Lord. God, the children of Israel, they never paused for a moment to ask, but what does the Lord say? They are coming up with these images to say, no, those people
you are giants. No, we cannot face them, this and that. But when you read Joshua chapter 2 verse 10, the Bible says this was after some 40 years uh, when the children of Israel were entering Canaan once again and now being led by Joshua. And Joshua sends the two spies and those two spies, they meet this woman who is a prostitute, Rahab. And Rahab said to these uh, spies, the Israelite, Rahab says in chapter uh, 2 of Joshua, uh, verse number 10, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. And she continues to say, And as soon as we have heard this thing, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now, Rahab confirms that the moment we heard of what God did for you when you were in Egypt and when you crossed the Red Sea, at that very moment, our courage, all of us, was lost. We were very much afraid of you. This is what Rahab is saying. Rahab is confirming, my brothers and sisters, that even when you come here to the land, we are all afraid of you. We will just step aside because your God is the only God in heaven above and the only God on the earth beneath. She is confirming that. So my brothers and sisters, what these spies were saying, it is not true. It is not false. They were supposedly to follow on the dictates of the Lord. They were supposedly to follow on that says the Lord. They were supposedly to go into the land of the promise and take possession of the land as God had promised them. Because remember, this was not their project. This was the project of the Lord. This was God's project. One other author, uh, she says that we have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget how the Lord has led us in the past. How did the children of Israel forget how the Lord had led them in the past? The past two years, they have been living by the Lord, by the power of the Lord, by the sustenance of the Lord. How come now at the borders of the promised land could they even doubt for a second the power of the Lord? How could they do that? How, my brothers and sisters, I am boggled when I read this. Time after time, God had demonstrated his love and his awesome power in every way imaginable. And now the Israelites are at the very right back door to the promised land. Why would they believe even for a second that God would forsake them? That God would want to kill them? That God would want to hand them over to the Canaanites to be killed? How? Because if God wanted them to be killed, they could have been the best. They could have died in Egypt. If God wanted them dead, they could have died by the Red Sea. If God wanted them dead, they wouldn't survive the wilderness. But all these two years, they have been living by the sustenance of the Lord. Now, how could they doubt the Lord now as they are in the brink, as they are at the threshold of the promised land? Why? It was now just uh, about 70 kilometers to enter uh, the promised land. And the children of Israel, they doubted the power of their God. When you read uh, chapter 14 of Numbers, the Bible says, That night the people shouted and they cried aloud. All the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, We wish we had died in the country called Egypt. Even in this desert, it is better. The Lord should not be leading us into this country called Canaan. They are refusing to enter Canaan. The people there will kill us and they will take our wives and children. And it would be better to return to Egypt. Then they said to each other, verse number four, we should choose our own leader, then we return to Egypt. How could the children of Israel refuse to enter Canaan when they are now 
now yeah, at the threshold, when they are now, they have gone, they have traveled this journey, 90% of it, only 10% is left, and they are now thinking of going back to Egypt. They refused to go, my brothers and sisters. They refused to go. I want you to realize, and I want you to take note, that everything rises and falls on ambassadors. The 12 men Moses selected to spy out the land of Canaan were more than just spies. They were ambassadors. Only one man from each of the 12 tribes of Israel was given the honor and the privilege of going on this spy mission. But with this great honor came a tremendous responsibility and accountability. The children of Israel, they refused to go because of some ambassadors who failed to represent God aright. My brothers and sisters, we are also the ambassadors of God. God has given us the mandate to go. Let us go and represent him well. Let us not be like the, the ten spies, but let us be like the two spies. The traits of the ten spies, you would realize that the ten spies, number one, they had doubt. They said, we are not able. Verse, uh, chapter 18, verse 31 of Numbers. They doubted the power of God. Doubt caused them to question their resources, to take the land as well as their God who was leading them. They had doubt, my brothers and sisters, we will not go if we doubt on the power of God. Let us not doubt. They doubted themselves and said that we are not able. We are not able. We will not go. We will fail to go. We will refuse to go only if we allow doubt in our hearts. Number two, they had self-depreciation. They looked down upon themselves. They say we are in our own sides as grasshoppers. So we are in their sight. Yeah, they saw themselves as teeny tiny little grasshoppers eh, about to be squashed by the enemy. They looked down upon themselves. If you look down upon yourself and tell yourself that I have no money and tell yourself that I am poor and tell yourself that I am ed uneducated and tell yourself this and that, you will fail to go. You will refuse to go because you look down upon yourself. Number three, these ten spies, they had fear. Joshua indicates in 14 verse 9 that they were afraid. Fear naturally follows doubt and self-depreciation. Fear then will paralyze one and keep him from acting. My brothers and sisters, Paul says in the book of Timothy, Timothy uh, chapter 1 uh, verse 8, that I did not give you the spirit of timidity. I did not give you the spirit of fear, but I gave you the spirit of love. I gave you the spirit of power and I gave you the spirit of courage. They were afraid. Number four, they had a critical spirit. They developed a critical spirit. When people become negative and inactive, they turn on to criticize others. The very ones who want to go, they will criticize them. The whole congregation was influenced by this terrible turn, member and complaining against God's leaders, Moses and Aaron. So the critical spirit will develop. If we are inactive, if we don't go, we will develop a critical spirit and criticize those who are going. We know some powerful ambassadors of Christ, some powerful preachers of righteousness. Yeah, you would wonder today what has come wrong with these people. They are now criticizing. They now have a critical spirit. They criticize everything about the church. They criticize everything about the leadership. This is what happens, my brothers and sisters. It is the spirit of the ten spies. Number five, they had a rebellion. The preceding attitudes contributed to the spirit of rebellion uh, against God. They said, let us make a captain and return to Egypt. Can you imagine being on the brink of the promised land and then want to re uh, return to the land of slavery, rebellion, my brothers and sisters. This is what will happen next when we refuse to go. They had ingratitude, number six. They had a spirit of ingratitude. Implied is also a spirit 
that was not thankful for their blessing. They failed, my brothers and sisters, to appreciate all that God had done for them in the two years after leaving Egypt. If it wasn't of God, there was no way we could cross the Red Sea. If it wasn't of God, we were not going to survive the wilderness. But we are here today because of God. They never had that spirit of saying, God, thank you, and above all, summed up in all these negative traits. These ten spies, they had unbelief. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 18 and 19, it says that unbelief kept them from entering Canaan. It was unbelief, my brothers and sisters. But what I pray for, let us not have the character traits of these ten spies. But I pray, my brothers and sisters, that we have the character traits of Joshua and Caleb. Only if we have these character traits will we enter Canaan. Only when we have these character traits will we say, I will go. Well, number one, Caleb and Joshua, they had faith. We are able to overcome. Verse number 30 of chapter 18. They say that we are able to overcome. They believed in themselves. Uh, they believed in their fellow Israelites. And most importantly, they believed in God. They say we are able. We are able. Let us go and take possession of the land. If you are saying I will go, you should have faith, my brother and my sister. If you are saying I will go and be an ambassador of Christ, have faith in yourself. Have faith in the fellow Christians. Have faith, most importantly, in God who will never fail us. Number two, these uh, two spies, Caleb and Joshua, they had confidence concerning the Canaanites. Joshua says, the people are bred for us. This is what Joshua is saying. These ten spies are saying, we were like grasshoppers in their own sight. But here Joshua is saying, these people are bred for us. My brothers and sisters, we should have this uh, confidence. They had confidence in the outcome of this undertaking because they knew that they were doing the will of God. If we are to go, if you are to say, I will go, you should have the confidence, my brothers and sisters. You should have the confidence and say that this mission, no matter what, it will be accomplished. They had courage. Joshua said, fear them not. Chapter 14, verse 9. He said, fear them not. He was not afraid of the giants. He was not afraid of the small cities. He was not afraid of the strength of the people there, the giants. He was not afraid. My brothers and sisters, number four, the Caleb and Joshua, yeah, they, were, uh, they had action. Caleb said, let us go up at once and possess it. Positive people will say, let's go and let's go now. Positive people will not say, no, I will go next year. No, I will go next month. No, I will go next week. But positive people will say, I will go as they are going. They will say, I will go and I will go now. They say, Caleb and Joshua, let us not wait. Let us go up at once and possess the land. And number five, above all, they had a spirit of thankfulness. They understood the land was a gift from God, a blessing due to his delight in them, a true appreciation. They realized that this is a promised land. This is not our land, but this is a land that we were promised by the Lord. And they said, this is a gift God is giving unto us. There is nothing that we need to do, but it is just to go. When you are given a gift, there is nothing that you need to do. You just have to accept my brothers and sisters. And this is what Caleb is saying. They are saying that this is a gift from God. Let us just take, let us just possess it because this is a gift. I appeal to you, my brother and my sister. You know, our theme song had the voice of Jesus calling. The last stanza says that, let none of you be heard idle saying, there is nothing I can do. Let none of you 
ambassadors of Christ be heard saying there is nothing I can do because there is something that you can do for the kingdom of God. There is something that you can do in the mission of Christ. There is something that you can do in the great command that we have been given by the Lord. Let none of you be heard I grew saying there is nothing I can do while the lust of this earth are dying and the master calls for you. The master is calling for you, my brother, my sister. The master is calling for you. Take the task he gives you gladly. The task that is ahead of you. The mission that is ahead of you. Take it gladly. Let his work be your pleasure. Enjoy working for him. Let the work of the Lord be your pleasure. Answer quickly when he calls you, here I am, Lord send me. Answer quickly when he calls and say, here I am, Lord I will go. Are you there my brother, my sister? You are saying I want to go and possess the land. I want to go and fulfill the mission God that you have given me. I want to go and spread the good news the gospel of salvation in every corner of, 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 of the earth, in every place, I want to go and spread this good news. I want to go and spread this message of salvation. Are you there? But you are saying, I need to have the character traits of Joshua and the Caleb. If you are there, God wants to use you today. And God is saying, my son, I want to use you today. My daughter, I want to use you today. My daughter, I want you to go and possess the land. Are you there? You are saying, Lord, here I am. Send me. If you are there, lift up your hearts to the Lord and we pray together. Our kind and loving Father, we want to thank you so much for this wonderful and beautiful moment that you have given unto us. Yes, the theme is saying, as the ambassador of Christ, I will go. But Father, when we read in antiquity, there are some of your ambassadors who refused to go, but we don't want to be like them. We don't want to be like the ten faithless spies, but we want to be like Joshua and the Caleb. All odds against us, we are saying, I will go. Because we have the faith, we believe in you. We believe that you have called us for a mission greater than us. We believe, Father, that you want to enter us into victory. That you want us to be victorious. That, Father, you want us to complete the mission that you have for us. May you help us. We are saying today, here I am, Lord, send me. We are saying today, I will go. May you help us. Give us the arsenal. May you help us, Father. Give us the power. May you help us. Give us everything that we need for us to go. Above all, give us the faith. Because most of the time, we doubt your power. We doubt your love. Give us the faith to believe in your promises. To believe in everything that you say unto us. Thank you, Father. Be with us now and forevermore. In the mighty and loving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.